the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. We're estranged. Estranged? You ain't even been consummated. I couldn't believe it. She raised her voice to me. I so wonder it took so long. Uh, I deserve it. I've been a fool and a slow fool at that. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. From Anything Goes and Before to Zoot Suit and Beyond, WNEW salutes Broadway. Beginning May 29th, we're going to pay tribute to the Great White Way, its people, its music, and its shows. You'll have a chance to attend the hottest black tie event of the Broadway season, the Tony Awards. Simply send a postcard by next Wednesday to... Salute to Broadway, WNEW, 655 3rd Avenue, New York, 10017. There'll also be dozens of opportunities to win hot tickets to Broadway shows, all of them for the correct answer to theater trivia questions, not to mention interviews and comments from Broadway's leading lights and the music. Yes, WNEW salutes Broadway from May 29th until Tony night, June 3rd, on the hot number 1130. There's a couple of Salvation Army guys over there. You know, the Salvation Army operates these uh, core community centers all over the country where everyone from kids to senior citizens can make new friends and... Hey, wait a second. How do you know all this about the Salvation Army? Well, I spoke with one of their officers the other day, and I asked him what the Salvation Army did. Come on. They pick up old clothes and furniture. Right. But what you don't know is they operate daycare centers, senior citizen homes, summer camps, and disaster relief services for areas that are strict with tornadoes, floods... Wow, uh, the Salvation Army's into all that? I had no idea. That's right. And the Salvation Army has been in America for nearly a hundred years. No kidding. 1980 is the hundredth anniversary of the Salvation Army in the United States. Wow, that's some tradition. If you need help with a problem or can help, call your local Salvation Army today. This is Lauren Green. Way back up in the hills, you can still find a few communities where things haven't changed all that much. Mulligan's Knob in the Missouri Ozarks is such a place. It's said that the James brothers, Frank and Jesse, once plied their trade in these parts. And times were you couldn't shake a bush without two or three preachers falling out. There's a lot of superstition, too. If your thumb knuckle itches, you can expect a visitor. And a housewife who sings before breakfast will weep before sunset. But no one is in much of a hurry in Mulligan's Knob. And it can take a coon's age to get something done. Even a courtship can take so long you can only see it moving under a microscope. But just about the most drawn-out, convoluted courtship there ever was, and the one that caused just about as much trouble as is ever available in one place, was the courtship of Cyrus Huddleston and Mildred Slocum. And that's only the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Neither Snow Nor Rain, by Percy Granger. Our stars, John McIntyre and Jeanette Nolan. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. At Sears, we know how important appliances are in your home and how important it is to you to keep them operating in top condition. That's why Sears wants their customers to remain satisfied with their products for years to come. That's why we service the Sears appliances we sell to help make sure that your appliance will continue to give you quality performance. If you have a problem, just call Sears Appliance Repair Service. We're nationwide and listed in the white pages of your telephone directory. Sears, where customer satisfaction is one of our most important priorities.
Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car at Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belt and 28 Tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belt and 28 Tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop! All across America, folks are saving at the Sears Pre-Memorial Day Sale. We picked up Sears Easy Living Flat and Ceiling Paints for only $8.99 and saved $4 per gallon. And on Easy Living Semi-Gloss Paints, too. These are Sears' best quality paints at a great price. I got rugged Sears Weatherbeater Paint for only $9.99 and saved $5 a gallon. That's a 30% savings on durable Sears Weatherbeater Paint. It's, it's a, a Sears Pre-Memorial Day, Day Sale. Available at most Sears retail stores. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. If you were to approach an old-timer, lean back up against his wall, knife in hand, whittling away, and if you were to ask him what's the strangest story he can tell you, and if that old-timer puts his knife away before opening his mouth, you know you've struck pay dirt. Well, now, I'll tell you. That empty building you passed on your way up to the holler used to be our post office. And that's before the government decided they wanted to balance the budget by shutting it down a couple of years back. Old Cy, the postmaster, used to ride up this way every day on his horse Clementine to deliver the mail. Cy had his eye on Mildred Slocum, who lives on up that way, and she had kind of a warm way of looking at him, too. But they was both so darn scrupulous, nothing ever would have happened at all if it hadn't been for outside circumstance. The post office was the social meeting place of our community in them days. Everyone knew Cy and Millie was sweet on each other, and we used to give Cy a bodaciously unmerciful time of it. Uh, there they be, Tobe. You're lost again. <laughs> Another game. Uh, that's one of us suckers today, Height. I gotta be thinking about wandering down to Squall Creek and noodling me some catfish. Hey, Cy, what's the weather? Uh, Clementine refused to drink this morning. Oh, rain for sure. Oh, I sure would like to get me some fish. Yeah, I'd think on it a while before sitting out. Hey, who's got mail today, Si? Uh, Ed Tuttle's got his newspaper from Springfield. Outside that, they ain't worn a dozen pieces. Oh, oh Tob. <laughs> Look who's coming. Yeah. Morning, Tob. Oh. Morning, Hyde. Oh, hello, Millie. Good morning, Cyrus. Yeah, good well, morning, Mildred. I was just on my way down to Perkins' store anyway, so I... Yeah, well, you, you got nothing today. Oh. Well, if you'd like to stop anyways, I made some molasses cake. Yeah, uh, you know how mad Ed gets if he don't have his newspaper on time. You, you could stop on your way back. Uh, so thank you, Mildred. But maybe tomorrow, hmm? I, how often you reckon you heard Si say that? Well, I don't know, but if it was a blasphemy, he'd be damned for sure by now. Somebody ought to shoot the two of you and check the breed. Well, Si, you can always change your mind. Taint no matter one way or the other. I'll be there. Oh, thank you, Mildred. Oh, <laughs> 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 a regular tomcat, old Si. Yeah, he can teach the young'uns a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, a couple of tore-down scoundrels, both of you. Well, maybe he's just a creature of habit. Uh, you and Mildred have known each other too long, is that it? Is that it, Si? Or has it got something again the fact she's a widow? I don't think none about Daryl. He's been dead 12 years. Well, then. She come in here nearly every day, and then every day she drops her line. When you gonna buy it? Well, there's, there's time, boys. There's time. No need to be hasty. Just how long this standoff courtship would have gone on is anybody's guess. But fate has a way of interfering in such matters. And one day we got a bit of news that upscuttled the whole situation. Boys, look here. Uh, what is it? It's a letter from Washington. From the Postmaster General. What's it about? Well, 
They want to close us down. They want to close down this post office. How can they do that? Well, they say it's an economy measure. They're going to close down the little bitty branches all across the country. They say we don't get enough mail here to justify the place. We 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 get mail. Yeah, and this ain't just a post office. Why, it's a social center for the whole neighborhood. Don't them folks in Washington know that? Yeah, I don't reckon they care much. Well, where else are we going to gather on a winter's night if not around this old stove here? Good morning. I just happened to be going past, and I figured I'd drop in in case. Uh, yeah, uh, you got a package, Mildred, here. From your niece over to Eureka Springs. Oh, it looks terribly heavy. Would you bring it up on Clementine? Oh, I love you. Sure, that's my job. Maybe I can even tempt you to stop for some whole cake and oh, wild that, honey. Thank you. Something's, something's come up. Oh, not bad news. Oh, I... no, 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 I've, I've got to... Rive some shakes from a cabin's all. Well, I'll wrap up some for you to take along for your supper then. See you later, Cy. You know, Cy, I'd say you got a predicament on your hands. Uh, why? Once the post office is closed down, it ain't likely you'll see much of her then, is it? Uh, oh, well, uh, I ain't thought about that. And if you can't get up the courage to ask her for her hand when you see her every day, how are you going to manage to do it then? Well, it ain't a question of courage. You just got to find the right moment, that's all. Well, if you ask me, I'd say the time's about come for you to fish or cut bait. <laughs> The bids are in for men's lightweight suits, and the offers from Sears show prices are down. Way down. What a time to buy during Sears Spring Suit Clearance. The prices are low, the value is high, and you can wear these handsome lightweight suits right now. Choose from vested suits, four-piece suits, and more. Not all styles and all sizes, so hurry in while quantities last. Sears Spring Suits for Men. Now a very good investment. Watch the birdie. Oh, that's great. Uh, your baby's wearing Sears sleep and play suit, right? Mm-hmm. And that baby stroller with the shovel handles from Sears, too? Right. Uh, why Sears? Because Sears has what I need. Take Winnie the Pooh sleep and play suits. They have double fabric toes, a must for my infant dynamo, and the stroller. That shovel handle lets me move the stroller easily with just one hand. But why the questions about Sears? Well, my wife's expecting. Oh, we get the picture. I'm on my feet most of the day, and when my workload gets me going, one thing I can depend on for comfort is my die-hard work shoes from Sears. We've sold thousands of pairs of Sears Best Die Hard Work Shoes. They're designed for men who want a comfortable fit as well as a ruggedly constructed shoe. Our Die Hard Work Shoe is cushioned from heel to toe, plus the sole is warranted. If the sole wears out in one year, return pair and we'll replace it free of charge. Die Hard Work Shoes, as tough and dependable as their name. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. He who hesitates is lost, goes the old saying. Cyrus Huddleston may have thought he had all the time in the world to let his relationship with Mildred Slocum drift along, but suddenly, things have hit a snag. You light a fire under a lazy man, and if he's a bona fide procrastinator, he'll sit there letting it burn his britches while he thinks about ways to put it out rather than jump off of it. And that's what Cy did. Now, here now. Let me see that letter. They say when they plan to shut you down? Yeah. Uh, they're going to run a survey to make sure they pick the right branches before they start pruning, but they don't figure that to take more than a month or two. You think that gives you enough time to work up the courage to ask Millie to marry you? <laughs> marry me? Snakes alive, Tobe. You think I'm a fool to rush into something like that? Man's got to do some considering. Well, you've had 12 years. Well, I need some more time. Anyway, it's like we was married. See each other every day. You ain't going to once they close this post office down and retire That's you. That's right. Well... Listen up, boys. I don't want you saying a word about this letter to anyone, you hear? Not till I figure out what I'm going to do. Old Cy knew that once the post office was closed and he was retired up to his cabin, he'd never have the moxie to go after the widow Slocum on his own. 
but he wasn't about to come off of his seat none too quick either. I think the old fella just didn't like the thought of change. Anyhow, the next morning I dropped by early and found him sitting quiet as a bullfrog on a lily pen. But there was a little crease in his brow, and that's just about as hepped up as I can recollect ever having seen him. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. Oh, Tobe, you alone? Either that or nearsighted. Good. Have a seat. I think I got it all figured out. You figured out how to ask Millie to marry you? No, no, no. no. How to keep the post office open till the time is right. I want your word you won't tell a soul about this, eh? No, not even height. Okay. Good. Now, the first question I ask myself is why the government wants to shut it down. Well, because it only serves 36 families? I go deeper than that, Tobe. It has to do with the volume of mail. The, the volume. Well, I know how you could fix that. Just starting writing love letters to Millie. No, no. I got a better idea. You see this piece of mail? It just come this morning for Narcissa Lindsay. Win big money just by entering. Mm-hmm. Details inside. Why, 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 that's just an old piece of junk mail. Well, the, that, the point is, it's mail. And it's the kind of mail these outfits will send by the barrelful to anyone they think will respond. Folks around here are pretty cautious when it comes to that sort of thing, son. Well, that, that's why I'm just going to fill in Narcissa's name for her and send it back. Well, you ought to open her mail like that. Why not? Like you say, she'd just chuck it out. Well, I don't see what it's going to accomplish. Well, what if I sent in everybody's name and they all got these contest forms? And what if I'd fill them all out? Well, how's that going to make Washington change its mind about closing you down? Because companies like this one here keep lists. And they trade them off with one another. And they figure if a person's a sucker for one contest, he'll be a soft touch for another. And it ain't only contests. Why, there's catalogs, book clubs, offers for this and that. All sorts of things. Well, I don't know, Si. There'll be so much mail coming into Mulligan's Knob, I'll have to put extra mail bags on Clementine. And when the government does its survey and sees how much business I'm doing, well, they'll think twice about shutting us down. I'll have all the time in the world. Sure enough, within a few weeks, that junk mail was pouring into Mulligan's Knob. At such a gallop, you'd have thought we was a bunch of immigrants right off the boat. And to size discomfort and dismay, folks began to resent his daily deliveries. It was as if they held him personally responsible for this sudden, mysterious deluge of junk mail. Uh, oh, hello, Tobe. Hello, Si. Folks are shunning me like I was poison ivy. I reckon you might have expected that. About the only person who ever acknowledges me anymore is Mildred. It's going to take more than a rain of junk mail to put out that torch she carries for you. I hear she's got herself a pen pal out of all of this. Nah, she responded to some outfit that takes your money to fix you up with someone to write to. So... She's corresponding with some old geezer in Pittsburgh. The thing that makes me feel so bad is she went and entered one of them contests. She took out a magazine subscription she couldn't afford in order to enter. Oh, real people never win them things. I know. She always was a trusting soul. Anyway, I can't tell her the truth. Not now. Well, you could put yourself and a lot of other folk out of their misery if you just proposed to her. Um, no, no. <laughs> I'll think of something. Some folks sent away for things and got cheated. Others played the sweepstakes and got nothing. Most everybody went from being just irritated to being downright angry. And that's just about the time they gathered in front of the post office. Yeah. Look at them, Tobe. The whole neighborhood's out there. I reckon you'd better go out and see what's on their mind. I know what's on their mind. What'll they do to me if they find out I'm behind all this? Oh, I don't think they'll be too hard on you. After all, you was only trying to save the post office. Yeah, well, they don't know that. Well, tell them the whole story. They can't hang you, can they? I don't know. Well, here goes nothing. I had to admire old Cy for biting the bullet like that. 
especially considering how lazy he was. But before he could fess up, something happened, and things took a turn that no one could have foreseen. Millie come running down the trail at a clip that would have shamed a razorback. I won! I won! You won light, Weedy Slocum. Look, everybody, I just won that magazine sweepstakes. I just won $50,000. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. This is Safety Vision, a quick and easy method for observing potential hazards in your home. Let's start by activating your safety scan. Methodically, focus on your hair dryer. Is the dryer mistakenly plugged in while not in use? Is it in a position where it could possibly fall into water and be a shock hazard? And is the dryer grill free of lint and hair? This time, focus on your electric food preparing appliances. Are they out of the reach of young children? And check that the appliance cord does not hang over a table edge or counter. Next, your safety scan should include checking all electrical appliances for an indication that the product design has been evaluated by safety engineers and complies with a nationally recognized safety standard. To do this, check for the UL label on the appliance. A public service message on behalf of Underwriters Laboratories and this station. <laughs> I was playing in a band for a few years on the road. We never ate very well, but we were having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. But the band sort of folded up. I went to work as a welder. My health was improving except for my smoker's cough. I was doing pretty good. What happened? The American Heart Association did a high blood pressure screening at the plant. I couldn't believe it. Mine was so high. I made them check it again. They told me to see my doctor right away, but... When did you have the heart attack? It was about six weeks later. Somehow I just knew it was happening and managed to get into the office and told him to call an ambulance. I was 24. The American Heart Association wants you to know that heart attack is not restricted to the elderly. It can happen at any age. You owe it to yourself to be aware of the risk factors and to know what you can do to lessen your chances of heart attack. For free information on heart attack and its risk factors, contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And that quote might well serve as our theme. I won! Just think of it! I just won $50,000! You never saw such a change of heart come over a crowd. Folks plumb forgot what they'd come to be angry about. It was like lightning struck the old oak that sits outside the post office. They scattered for home to dig out all the promises and guarantees and offers, the ones they'd thrown away, and they began to sign up for everything in sight. And Cy, he was feeling worse than ever. Sweepstake lotteries, contests. I feel like a low-down, egg-sucking dog every time I load up this trash on old Clementine here. Well, sir, uh, the way I see it, there's only one thing you can do. What's that? Start confiscating all the stuff. Call what? You got it. Uh, here come Mildred. Girl, I called you before you said outside. Have you got a letter for me? Yeah, something... Here from that pen pal of yours in Pittsburgh. Here you are. He's got awful fancy handwriting for a fella, ain't he? Oh, he's a highly educated person. You tell him about winning that sweepstakes? Well, of course I did. That's news, ain't it? Uh, tell me, what do you figure on doing with all that, Jack? Oh, I, I ain't thought about it yet. Maybe move away from here? Uh, move away? I don't rightly know. Uh, excuse me. I'm going over here by the creek to read Mr. Hoog's letter. <laughs> She's been acting like a spring chicken ever since she won that money, ain't she? <laughs> I wonder if it's just money. Oh, what else would it be? What do you know about this fella she writes to you? Uh, her name is Horace Hoogs. Other than that, she ain't said much about him. Hmm. 
Oh, you think some lonesome old codger from the big city is romancing her? And what are you going to do about it if he is? Well, I... Uh, look, look out. I'm... She's coming back this way. Oh. Cyrus, I'd like a word with you. Uh, oh, well, it's time for me to be making my deliveries. Well, it, it won't take but a minute. Well, it looks like a mighty nice day. I think I'll amble up to Squirrel Creek and see if the bass are biting. Well, you, you don't have to go, Tobe. Uh, if I don't get my line in the water soon, I ain't going to catch no fish. I'm glad Tobe went on, because I want to speak to you alone, Si. Well, I, I really only got a minute... Si, I've always considered you my friend. Well, sure, I know that. Well, we've known each other most of our lives. And you was Daryl's best man at our wedding, and you spoke words over his grave when he died. Yeah, well, Daryl's a good man. So I want to ask your advice. About what? This Mr. Hoogs has just asked me to marry him. He's what? It's right here in this letter. He's made me a proposal of marriage. Now, he's honest about it. He says he knows we haven't met, and, and he thinks we should, and he wants me to come to Pittsburgh. He says he'll pay my way and put me up at a real nice hotel. I feel we've gotten to know each other tolerable well already. Of course, not like I know you, for example. No, but of course we've known each other a long time. I can tell from his letters that he's a kind man. Well, that's nice. What I'm asking you is, should I accept? Uh, oh, well, that, that's up to you. Is it? Ain't it? Do you remember that superstition us girls used to believe in when we was young? We thought if a girl baked a salt cake and ate it just before going to bed, whoever brought her a glass of water in her dreams would be the man she'd marry. Well, I did that, Si. And you was the one who appeared in my dreams. Oh, well, you must have been thinking of Daryl. He and I was pretty close friends. Is that all you've got to say? Oh, well, I... Well, I apologize if I ain't being much help, Millard, but I can't tell you what to do. Well, Cyrus, as a matter of fact, you have. <laughs> Hello, Si. Uh, he asked her to marry him. Who did? That scallywag in Pittsburgh. Well, ain't that something? What am I going to do? Well, what's she going to do? Accept. Well, let that be a lesson to you. Yeah, isn't that all you got to say? Ain't no fair of mine. She'll move to Pittsburgh. Long ways away. I've known her all my life. Gonna be kind of unusual not having her around anymore. Yeah. You know what she told me? She said she dreamed once that I was the one she was going to marry instead of Daryl. She told you that? Well, you should have took the bull by the horns right then and there. But she ain't in Pittsburgh yet. <laughs> Funny thing. I never would have figured on Millie to be a mail-order bride. Yeah. She ain't in Pittsburgh yet. She ain't. No carpet-bagging dude's going to trundle her off. Very truly yours. How shall I sign myself? Door's open. Come on in. Cyrus! Hello, Mildred. Uh, do you care to sit? No. Well, I'm so sorry I ain't got nothing to offer. I ain't done much biking recently, and I... I sure didn't expect you. Uh, it's all right. I ain't, I ain't hungry. I, I didn't expect to come by, either. Well, I'm glad you did. You are? Yes. Because uh, uh, I, I was just finishing up my letter to Mr. Hoogs in Pittsburgh. Oh? I reckon you can take it with you. I'll, I'll fetch money for the stamp. Well, you, you won't need no stamp. Oh? I'll pay for it. Oh? Mildred, uh, there's something I, I just want to say. 
Yeah, yes. It, it's something I've felt for a long time now. And that is... It, that, that is... Yes? I think you're making a blame fool of yourself. Is that all you think? Well, you don't even know him. I know him by his letters. He's a very decent sort. And at least we have some communication between us. Now, I'll tell you what I think. I think he wants to marry you for that money you won. Cyrus. That's right. You told him about it, didn't you? And that's what that's when he wrote you his proposal? He didn't say a word about the money. He doesn't even congratulate me for winning it, so I'm sure the thought never crossed his mind. How old is he, anyway? He's quite well along in years from the sound of things. Well, I still say he's a fortune hunter. And I know for a fact he ain't. How? Because he is a steel magnet. That's how. He owns a steel company and he makes more money than you and I can even imagine. He told you that? Yes. Well, he's lying. He's trying to put you off your guard. He told me long before I ever won that money. Them's mean thoughts you have, Cyrus. I'd never thought you was capable of that. Well, if he's a prosperous steel maggot, my magnet, what what would he want with an old widow mountain woman who's pushing 65 if she's a day? What? Well, I... I... I didn't mean that like it sounded. Mean, mean thoughts. So that's what you've been harboring in your heart all these years. Cyrus Huddleston, I want you to leave my house and don't you ever come back. Sears has a bed spread with all the muscle to resist the wear and tear it gets from high-spirited kids. It's Tough Cord, a sturdy blend of 75% polyester and 25% rayon. Choose from bunk twin and full sizes in 10 bright solid colors or five coordinating plaids. All machine washable and permapressed for no fuss, easy care. When you want value in a strong and sturdy bed spread, look for Tough Cord. Because kids not only sleep in their bedrooms, they play there too. At most Sears retail stores. Nearly everyone at our party mentioned our new Sears Dream Supreme carpeting. Didn't anyone say anything about my rutabaga dip? Marvin said Dream Supreme looks so thick and luxurious. He loved its velvety soft plush pile. What about my rutabaga dip? Eloise adored the color. Of my rutabaga dip? I told her that avocado lime is just one of Dream Supreme's 20 lustrous colors, and when Doris heard the Dream Supreme is so reasonably priced and treated with Scotchgard brand fabric protector... Okay, what about my tuna fish upside down cake? Dream Supreme carpeting in most larger Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car in Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belt and 28 tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belt and 28 tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. Lorne Green again, and here's the concluding act of Neither Snow Nor Rain. Well, I thought for sure when Cy left me at the fishing hole and strode off to Millie's house, he was going to steal a march on that Pittsburgh dude. And we was finally going to hear wedding bells. So naturally, I was surprised when he told me that all he'd been able to do was make Millie madder than a whip mule. So I reckon that's it. We're estranged. Estranged? You ain't even been consummated. I couldn't believe it. She raised her voice to me. It's a wonder it took so long. Uh, I deserve it. I've been a fool and a slow fool at that. Yeah. And she gave me this letter to mail. She'll be off to Pittsburgh soon as she hears from that fella. Yeah, all over. Maybe so. But the mess you've made of everyone's life ain't. That junk mail is still pouring in. <laughs> that was a by darn stupid idea, wasn't it? I don't know how I thought I could change the government's mind. Point is, you started it, and it's up to you to stop it. How? Well, like I told you before, confiscate it. All of it that comes in and all of it that goes out. You know what had happened to me? That's again the law. Oh, who's your duty to? Your neighbors or the law? Just burn it all up in the stove over there. Yeah, I could go to jail. Not if no one finds out. Well, I made a mess up all around. That's what I did. Oh, I don't know. You might be able to recoup some of your losses. Mm. How? 
I'd say the first letter you ought to confiscate is that one there in your hands. Mildred's? Well, that's personal. I'll say. But if he don't get her answer... Uh Uh-huh. And if she don't hear from him... She don't leave. What I figure is the two of you need a little cooling off period before you start up your torrid romance again. And we don't want some big city Don Juan gumming up the works. Well, Cy started burning up all the mail that same night. And the first letter into the fire was Millie's reply to that gent. Of course, folks was curious about the sudden drop mail rate, but Cy just told them there was a new law making that kind of mail illegal. Everyone fussed a bit, but secretly I think they was relieved, like gamblers whose decks get taken away from them. I'd come by Friday afternoon to give Cy a hand with the burning and to be his lookout. Okay. Ready for the first batch? Lucky we've had a cool spring or folks might wonder why I was burning the stove in May. Millie been around to inquire why she ain't heard from her boyfriend? No, she still ain't speaking to me. But there's been three letters from him. One just came today. You read it? No. Well, it wouldn't be right. I'll burn it, but I won't read it. The following Friday when I came by... Cy had a sad look on his face. The letter he'd been waiting for had finally come. Yeah. There it is. The letter from Washington. They've done their survey and we're still getting the axe. We're all going to be sorry about that. 24 years I've been postmaster here. Yep. Just don't seem right that they ought to be able to do that to us. Well, they've done it. And I ain't going to try fighting them anymore. Yeah? Shall we get on with what we got to burn? Uh, Not so much this week. I think them outfits is finally getting discouraged and starting to take folks' names off on the list. You got the weekly letter from Horace Harrison Hoogs to start off with? Yep, right here. You know, he must be one mad buzzard, that old fortune hunter. Uh Oh, look who's coming. Well, there's a Mildred. Quick, open the grate. In you go. Close it up, quick. Good day, Toad. Uh, howdy, Millie. Uh, the uh, uh, post office is closed now, Mildred. It's after hours, you know. Toad, but tell Cyrus I know it's closed. Uh, she knows, Cy. Tell him I've just come to see if I mightn't have received some mail. He might have forgotten to deliver me. Forgotten? Well, no, Mildred. You ain't... Toad? <laughs> He says no, Millie. Well, I'm a patient woman, as you know, Tobe. And if Mr. Hoogs has not yet responded to my letter, there must be a reason. Good day, Tobe. Well, don't look like things are ever going to be right between us, does it, Tobe? I admit I had to agree with Cy. But then the very next week, something happened. I had a bad leak in my roof that I had to get fixed. So for the first time, I wasn't able to be there to keep guard while Cy burned. Had to get it done quick this week. And the first batch. Oh, excuse me. What? What? Oh, I I didn't hear you come in. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I know you're closed for the day, but I figured you'd be able to help me. Is this Mulligan's knob? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for a Miss Mildred Slocum. Mildred? Right up the trail about a half a mile. Hmm. Looks rutted. My sports car sits pretty low to the ground. Do you think it'll make it? Fred, you'll have to walk. I go out on horseback myself. Oh? You must be Cyrus Huddleston. How'd you know? Miss Slocum spoke very highly of you in her letters. Letters? Who are you? Horace Henderson Hoogs, the third. The steel magnet for Pittsburgh? Steel magnet? Oh, 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 I see Mildred's told you about me. Uh, is there something wrong? I, I don't know. You're just younger than I'd figured. You, you drove all the way here? Oh, yes, yes. Kind of odd form of transportation for a big businessman, ain't it? Uh, planes make me nervous. Uh, that's so? Yes. Uh, if you could just direct me, I'd... You know, pretty... uh, Millie's kind of old. Old? <laughs> uh, 
What's age except an attitude of mind? I, I only mention it because somehow she's got the notion you two was the same age. Why, I've never tried to deceive her in any way. Oh? I... What's a rich fellow like you want with an old, ignorant mountain woman anyways? It's clear from her letters that she has the kind of character I admire. Yeah, and $50,000. Oh? Really? You knew about that. She told you. I only drove out, you see, because I hadn't heard from her and I was concerned and, and that... Yes, and you didn't want that money slipping through your fingers. Man, it won't take Mildred but two seconds to see through you all the way to the Red River. You, uh, you know her well, huh? It ain't even worth your time to go to her house. You just head on back where you come from and we'll forget all about it. Pretty warm evening for a fire, isn't it? What do you mean? In your stove there. Uh, oh, that. Just, uh, what is it you're burning? <laughs> Looks a lot more like mail than firewood to me, Mr. Huddleston. Now, I'm not an expert in these matters, but isn't that illegal? Talk straight, Mr. Hoogs. What are you going to do? Well, I could report this, of course. It is a criminal offense. Oh, well, uh, uh, there's an explanation. I was doing it for everybody's own good. Arrogance, Mr. Huddleston. Arrogance cometh before the fall of the judge's gavel. Of course, if you were to hold your tongue while I made my way with Mildred... Jail sentence in my age. The choice is yours. Tobe? Oh. oh. Uh, Mildred. Tobe ain't here. Uh... No, he had to fix his roof. I'm afraid you'll just have to speak to me direct. Mildred? Who are you? I'm Horace. Horace Harrison Hoogs the Third. Horace? In the flesh. And you're Mildred. Well, I just came to see if there was a letter. Why did you stop writing? Oh, I haven't. I've been writing every week. Why haven't you answered? But I did. I accepted your offer to come to Pittsburgh. You did? Yes, I... But you're... You're younger than I assume. Youth? <laughs> what is youth, Mildred? Except an attitude of mind. The exciting thing is... We've finally met. Uh, yes. Would you like to go for a ride in my sports car? Sports it's car? It's right outside, yes. We can become better acquainted. Sigh. I reckon now that Mr. Hoogs is here, there ain't no more point in keeping up the hardness between us. I'm prepared to forget what you said if you're willing to apologize. Uh, apologize? This man, this man... No, 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 Mr. Huddleston. You don't want to create a scene, do you? Um, no. I apologize. And I accept. And sigh... If Mr. Hoogs is serious about wanting to get married, and if it turns out we cotton to each other, of course, well, I'd be mighty honored if... if you'd be the one to give me away. What? On account of how we knowed each other all these years, I can't think of anyone I'd rather have with me at a moment like that than you. Me give you away to this fraud? Sigh. Careful, mister. He ain't no steel magnet, Millard. He's after your money just like I thought. You're not a steel magnet, Mr. Hoogs? No, Miss Slocum. I'm not. Then who and what are you? Go ahead, Horace. You tell her the truth. She's going to find out anyways. I... I'm sorry, Miss Slocum... I, I I live by myself, you see, and and I write to a lot of people just like I wrote to you. I, I I I make kind of a game out of it, making up different stories about myself and trying to keep all the stories straight. I didn't mean anything by it, but when you wrote me about all that money you won, I thought it was worth a try. And you did seem like a nice woman. Thank you. <laughs> If our last letters hadn't been destroyed by Mr. Huddleston here, we might have... Well... Cyrus, did you destroy our letters? I didn't figure he was up to no good. You did it? For my sake? Now they'll chuck me under the jail for sure. We ain't going to see each other for a while. 
And at our age, a while can be a long time. Sigh. I've waited for you all these years. I'm sure I can wait a little longer now. Well, Cy never did go to jail. Considering the circumstances of the case, the judge gave him a suspended sentence on the condition that he would marry Millie and get it over with. But the post office was closed down. There was no stopping that. As for all that money Millie won, well, she used some of it to make up for folks' losses in the junk mail whoop up. And the rest of it, well, right now, they're just having a good time thinking about it. Oh, there was one last thing. Now, Millie told me she never did intend to marry that Pittsburgh dude. But she was at her wit's end how to get Cy to speak up. It's graduation time, so give your graduate a scholar. I've always wanted a smart girl for my son. I mean the Scholar Electric Typewriter at Sears. The perfect gift for son or daughter at only $169.99. That's $30 off. The Scholar features power return, power repeat backspace, power shift, and more. Key set tabulator and touch set margins plus carrying case. The Scholar Electric is really my son's type. It's my type of deal. $30 off till June 9th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. I sell seashells by the seashore and buy my swimwear at a Sears store. Look beautiful by the sea or anywhere under the sun in swimwear from Sears. Sensational one and two piece styles in misses and junior sizes. Some in pulsating prints, others in sizzling solids. Colors that dazzle look terrific with a tan. Come on in. The fashion's fine in the sportswear department at Sears. This summer's hot item, cool t-shirt dresses. Now a Sears super value for only $14.99. How? Well, simple. It's a Sears special purchase, which means though not reduced, it is an exceptional value. They're bright, solid dresses in v-necks, scoop necks, and more. Of washable polyester and cotton knits in Mrs. Sizes. Choose your favorites now while quantities last, because at $14.99, these t-shirt dresses won't stay at Sears long. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Neither Snow Nor Rain was written by Percy Granger, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were John McIntyre and Jeanette Nolan. Featured in the cast were Tom Holland and Shepard Mencken. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Are you in the market for a used car? If you are, it would be wise to shop around until you get a feel for the market. It's important for you to find out if the car is covered by a warranty. A used car warranty is limited. For example, it may cover the first thousand miles or 30 days. Remember, however, the warranty is as good as the dealer who backs it. And you check his reliability with your local Better Business Bureau. Also, remember that careful inspection is the key to enjoying a used car. Be sure and look for rust. Check the tires, the shock absorbers, and the operating controls. And incidentally, it's also a good idea to take a test drive. You see, by giving the car the once-over before you buy it, you're protecting yourself against a faulty purchase and a lot of headaches after you've bought it. This has been a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Mystery by the Masters. 
Edgar Allan Poe, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Robert Louis Stevenson, Guy de Maupassant. You'll hear radio dramatizations of their most popular works on our CBS Radio Mystery Theater Weekend Classics. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for Mystery seven times a week on most of these stations with original radio plays Monday through Friday. And on the weekends, we bring you the classics, modern adaptations of the world's greatest stories of mystery, adventure, suspense, and even humor from the pen of Mark Twain. If you've read them before and want to enjoy them again, or if they're new to you now, listen here and enjoy our radio dramatizations of the world's great literature every Saturday and Sunday on CBS Radio Mystery Theater. And of course, listen in Monday through Friday, too, for original tales of the macabre or for most of these CBS Radio Network stations. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Let's listen. I should think that by just slowing down your speech and carefully avoiding rhymes, you would soon get over this malady. That's what you'd do, but you're not me. It isn't that I won't or shan't. I would if I could, but I can't. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.